The shadow side to that is that oftentimes you will believe even a lie that you know to be false because the culture deems it honorable. This seems like a new phenomenon, doesn't it? But can I suggest something to you? It's actually very old. It's at least 2,000 years old. And you know who invented it? It wasn't the West. It was my people, the Middle East. You're welcome. <laughs> when you look at the way that the culture that Jesus actually worked, administered, died, and rose again in, you see it very eerily similar to a cancel culture. So missiologists, people who study missions, will, and even sociologists, by the way, will break up the world into different kinds of cultures based on how they affect and um, enforce morality. So we in the West are what's called an innocence guilt culture. <clears throat> Here's why. In the West, we, we value our individualism. You know, you have the right to believe, to think, to say, and to act in whatever way you want, short of you know, violating someone else's rights. But you have an individual right. We have a, a belief in the individual. And it's great because it fosters innovation, it fosters all kind of strong work ethic, and you break down barriers, and you, you know, you, you're pioneering and frontiering going on in that kind of a culture, and it's wonderful. But like everything, it's got a shadow side to it. And the shadow side of rampant individualism is that people act, believe, and say things without considering how they affect other people, because the individual is the most important thing. And so sometimes we forget our societal impact on other people. But where the morality comes in is this. Because we're so individualistic, if I do something wrong, if I go against what the culture says is right or wrong, and I do something wrong, I have an individualistic, internal sense of wrong and right. And so my conscience is pricked a little bit, and I think to myself, you know what, I've done something wrong. It's gnawing at me, I lose a little sleep over it, I need to go apologize to that person, I need to do something to make up for what I've done. Because I was innocent, then I became guilty, and I need to be innocent again. And in order to do that, I need to pay my debt to the other person, and therefore I will be made right. That's an individualistic sense of morality. In the East, it's different. In the East, they don't have an innocence and guilt culture, they have an honor-shame culture. An honor-shame culture values the collective. So no one individual is, is, is more important than the group. So in a family, for example, if I'm in a family and I do something that is laudable, that is good and, and noble, and honorable in the sight of the culture, my family automatically gets all the honor that I had as well. If I do something good, they are deemed to be good people and they have the benefit of the honor. But if I do something shameful, not only am I shamed, but they're shamed as well because it reflects upon them. And so what the individual does in an Eastern honor and shame culture is he's constantly or she's constantly thinking about what they do and how it's perceived by their culture. Is what I do, say, or believe honorable in the culture's eyes or is it shameful in the culture's eyes? Now that has a good aspect to it because you do care about what other people think. You do care about the welfare of other people and so you don't just act in your own self-interest, you act in the interest of others. That's good. The shadow side to that is that oftentimes you will believe even a lie that you know to be false because the culture deems it honorable and so you will walk away from the truth. That's the culture Jesus worked in, a culture that valued the collective at the expense of the individual. We live in a culture that values the individual at the expense of the collective. And somehow, the Lord of glory, the Lord of the word, the God made flesh, who is God the word made flesh, allows his words to transcend both of those cultures at the same time, and in fact transcend first century. He speaks first century, and he speaks 2020 quite well. How do I know this? What is the cancel culture? The cancel culture is an honor and shame culture. It says, if you say something that violates what the collective thinks is right, we won't engage in debate. We will shame you out of existence. We will silence you. That is what honor-shame cultures do. If you happen to change your worldview 
from the religion of the culture you're from in the East and in the Middle East. It's a tremendous shame. Even if what you change to is true, it doesn't matter. You violated the norms. You've betrayed everybody you love. And then we will ostracize you and get rid of you. Not always, but it does happen. That's what the, cult, the cancel culture does. It's exactly what it does. Exactly. Now here's the key, okay? This is important. In an honor and shame culture, when you do something wrong, it's not like the West. In the West, if you do something wrong, you can do something right to fix it. In an honor and shame culture, you don't do something wrong, you have done something shameful. And when you do something shameful, you have become a shameful person. You don't do something wrong, you become someone bad. Which means you need an identity change to fix you in the culture's eyes. It is no accident then that the gospel is not about making bad people good, it's about making dead people live. 